Can you say hi? Do you not care at all about the camera? No, no you don't. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I'm also known as Rye Crafty. Uh, that's the name of the channel and my Instagram account. So today's just a bit of a catch up about what I've been sewing, what I've been knitting, what my next sewing plans are. No big theme, just some stuff I've sewn and have had a lot of fun with. This is a wrap skirt. It's sort of a high-low hem. You can see there that the back is lower and there's this sort of nice petal shape on the uh, two edges of the wrap. This pattern is the Alba skirt from Sew Over It. Uh, it's part of a bundle of patterns, so I bought this uh, last summer. Yeah, it's their Summer Dreaming Capsule Bundle and it has so many great patterns. I've already made a couple. Um, in my roundup of what I made in 2022, I made that sort of lime green wrap top. That's from that bundle as well. And this is the Alba skirt. Okay. Yes, you sit beside me. And there's two variations of the Alba skirt. There's this one, which is just sort of plain on the edges of the wrap, or there's a version with a ruffle which is amazing and I really want to make that one too. I actually started out thinking I would make the ruffle version out of this fabric. I had nowhere near enough fabric but one of my toxic traits is that I think I can squeeze um, patterns out of way less fabric than is called for <laughs> and honestly sometimes it works. So I was convinced I could get the ruffle version of this skirt out of, um, I think I had two meters. Yeah, I had two meters of this fabric. And I think it, it was a wider fabric. So I printed out the ruffle version because the ruffle version and this plain version are different um, pattern files because they end up being about the same length. So obviously the, like the main pieces will be smaller on the ruffle version because there's all the ruffly bits. So I printed out the ruffle version, taped it all together, and then spent most of one evening just like trying to Tetris it all onto my meager two meters of fabric. I feel like I got close. I couldn't make it work. And I was also starting to think that um, a ruffly wrap skirt in this sort of bandana cowboy fabric might be a bit much even for me. <laughs> So then I thought, okay, we're going to do the plain version. So I printed out that version of the skirt and trimmed it and stuck it all together with tape. That version of the skirt, <laughs> I had two meters. That version calls for 2.7 meters, but I did it. I managed to get all the body pieces with the um, pattern uh, running. I guess this is sort of up down, because like, you can see it would make stripes like this. So all the body pieces, the pattern is running the same way, so it doesn't look too, or even more patchworky than it already does. And I managed to get the, um, all the ties sort of cut out of the same section of the pattern, so they're all uniform. I think there was one spot, yes, here. On one of the ties, I did have to piece it together. There's a seam here. Where I just could not fit that long piece on the same row of the pattern that I wanted to. I still, I have some leftovers. The fabric is from Blackbird Fabrics. It was a, I think it was dead stock. I bought it last summer and I think two meters was all that there was left. Because I think I was planning on making a, this skirt or a skirt like this where I might need slightly more than two meters, but I think I bought it all. Um, or all that was left of the dead stock. I've got a little bit left over, probably not enough to make a top on its own, but I'm thinking I just hang on to it. So I love that Blackbird um, gives you these cards with your order. They come stapled to your fabric. And it's just a good reference so you know what you've got. So this was 100% yeah, round, 58 inches wide, and I had two meters. But what I do with these Blackbird cards is I leave them on the fabric 
I only take them off when I wash it, so that I know that it's been pre-washed. And then once I've um, done something with it, I take a little scrap and I staple it to the card. And I put it on the ring. And then these are the ones, the fabric that's been pre-washed, but not, obviously not used yet, or I just haven't done the, uh, the little scrap of fabric. And it does sort of bring home exactly how much I have bought from Blackbird <laughs> over the years. I mean, this is everything I've ever bought from them, I think, unless I lost the cards before I started doing that. But it's a very handy reference for when I'm trying to remember how much I have, because they write that in there, or what colorway, and for doing stuff like telling this, telling you guys what I did. Oh yeah, and this Alba pattern, I think in the Sew so Over It uh, Summer Dreaming bundle, you can buy it's divided into two sort of size ranges in the bundles and the total size range I wrote down because at the skirt I wrote down the waist goes from waist 24 to waist 50 is the size range uh, for the skirt in that bundle but yeah so I think this skirt is gonna be tons of fun to wear in the summer it was definitely not seasonally appropriate when I made it it's still kind of not it's still too cold for skirts like this out there um, it was a really nice pattern. The wrap part was put together in the same way as the wrap top I made last summer. So you have the nice little piece here where you thread your um, thread your tie through. I made the size 14 because I think I made the 12 in the top and I wasn't certain if I could have sized up in the top just for the wrap on the waist so it wouldn't be quite so tight to get it closed where I wanted. So on this, although at the bottom it was still wrapping at the waist I thought okay I'll do the size 14 and I feel like I want to wrap it slightly tighter than it goes because like I, I thread the tie through the little hole in the waistband and then I pull it all the way through up until like right up until there and you can't really um, wrap it any tighter than that without starting to pull the whole skirt through that little spot it's fine it fits fine but I feel like I think I want to wear it slightly higher than it can go just because of that limit on the wrap but then I also feel like if I made the size down I think it might have felt a little small or like I wasn't wrapping it overlapping the fronts enough so I feel I think I might just be very between sizes in the sew over it um, and how they draft their sizes very excited to wear this later in the year in a couple months <laughs> So the next thing I made is actually the top I'm wearing. You may have noticed. <laughs> uh, this is the Deer and Doe Orage pattern. It's a pattern for a dress and a couple tops with various necklines and also you can make the skirt part of the dress into just a skirt. They also include a waistband and instructions to do that. So that's a pattern for knits and I originally saw this pattern um, in a video by Made by Cathcraft, she made a gorgeous red version of this dress for Valentine's Day with this neckline. So this is the neckline that comes with, that is for the dress in the dress pattern, but you can make it into a top. Mine is only top length. Um, I did this because I had some really nice fabric I wanted to make the dress from, but the fabric was nice enough and expensive enough that I wanted to test which size would fit me um, at least for the top and like how this whole little window thing would work. Uh, so I made it out of a cotton jersey, which actually, <laughs> after I cut all the pieces out, and I think I had sewn the front two bits together, I was looking through uh, Deer and Doe's Instagram, and they had a big warning about not making it out of cotton jersey and making sure that your jersey has enough stretch. So I think they wanted like a rayon jersey or something slightly slinkier. And then here's me, I just cut this thing out of cotton jersey. So then the pieces sat for a while, I didn't do anything with them. Um, but I wanted to make the dress for my birthday, which is at the beginning of April. And that got closer and closer and closer. And then I thought, okay, fine, I'm just gonna sew up the cotton thing. It might not work, doesn't mean the dress won't work. But it's pretty okay. It does tend, like these bits do tend to gape a little or like try and turn up. You do a little bit of a I guess it's a facing, just a little strip along here that you then fold under and behind and sew down. And sometimes it does, it still does try and want to flip up. It helped me see that how the arms fit, the shoulders, this is okay. 
It's a little mock neck, even in my not-so-stretchy cotton jersey um, that I bought a million years ago. I think from Girl Charlie, when probably when that store first opened. It was definitely when it more than seven years ago I bought this blue fabric. I have many tops made out of it because I just bought so much. I think this is the third top, third or fourth top I've made out of it. And it's great to have around. I keep it now for doing stuff like this, like doing tests. Like I, I tested the stretch percentage. They had a little thing where cut it this big and see if it stretches to here. It did, but only just and was not happy about it, but it was okay. I like the top. I've worn it around. I don't think I've worn it out, but it's nice just to hang around the house. And it helped me realize that yes, this is the right size. So I made the size 40. This pattern, the bust size goes from 31 inches to 57 inches. And then I made the 40, which probably for about 36. I can't remember what the 40 is for, but that's the one I picked as my size. Worked out well. So then this worked out well. I had like one weekend left uh, before I was going to visit. I went to visit my parents over my birthday weekend and I knew we were going out for dinner so I wanted to wear a nice new dress for going out for dinner and I cut this out. I just got really tired that weekend so I think I cut this out on the Sunday. I did. I sewed the top up on the Monday, sewed the skirt and put it together on the Tuesday and then left for my parents a couple days later and it was so great like in and it's true in the slightly stretchier material the top fits even better i'll make sure i post some photos hello make sure i take some photos to um put up with this but yeah this is merino jersey from blackbird in a great plum color i had two and a half meters of this i mean when it's not being worn it just looks like a a big purple blob yeah, so I had two and a half meters of this. I honestly don't remember what I was planning to make with it. I bought it on a Black Friday sale in 2021, so it's been sitting in the stash for a year and a half. I may have been thinking of making an ebony dress with it, because I think that was around the time I made two ebony dresses by Closet Core. But it marinated in the stash. I saw Kath's gorgeous red version and thought I want one of those <laughs> and then I remembered I had this and it all worked out so well you're snoring buddy the camera can hear you so something I've seen uh, people on Instagram when they post their makes uh, something I've seen people doing lately is posting a cost uh, which I think is really neat to be transparent. I'm sorry, he's snoring. He's so, so tired. He's had such a tough day. So yeah, I've been enjoying when people post the cost of uh, their makes uh, on Instagram because it, I think some people or beginners or non-sewers who think they're going to get into sewing think sewing is going to be cheaper than buying clothes and it can be. And if you repair things you already own, it certainly is, but it is also, it also can be a very expensive hobby. <laughs> and th this fabric in particular was one of the more expensive fabrics I've, uh, I've bought. And so I just thought that's neat to add it, add it up like that. So I had two and a half meters of this purple fabric. Yes, two and a half meters. The pattern called for two and a half yards, so 3.2 meters of fabric for my size and I got it out of two and a half meters. I honestly didn't even look, <laughs> here's my toxic trait again, I didn't even look at the uh, fabric requirement when I thought I want to make that dress out of that fabric because I just assumed there would be enough. And it seemed like a lot when I laid it out on my table and looked at the pattern pieces. My mistake was that obviously, this is obvious, we have to cut two of the skirt pieces. And I was just happily cutting away, like, oh yeah, all this is going to fit just great. And then I got to the first, <laughs> the skirt piece, and as I was cutting it out, I saw that it said cut two, and I had that moment of, oh, oh, do I have enough space? And I did. Like, I got the whole dress out of my two and a half meters when it calls for 3.2. And I have a little bit left over. Again, not a lot, not enough for its own garment, but... I'm gonna hang on to it. 
I'm going to hang on to it. And maybe I'll get some other... Maybe I'll get some other merino jersey at some point. Or figure out something I could patchwork with it. It's just so sad to disturb him. Let's put something under your chin. See if you don't snore then. Chin rest? So yeah, back to pricing. I think it's really neat when people sort of tally up what everything cost on the project and even sometimes charging, charging, but like putting in what the labor would have been for their hours of work. That's not something I track and I sew so sporadically that I think it would be hard to. Like that skirt, well that skirt I did pretty quickly, but this top, like I sewed part of it and then it sat for weeks. I just don't make notes of that stuff, so maybe I'll try. But at least fabric-wise, uh, I bought this merino jersey fabric from Blackbird in their Black Friday sale, so there was a discount. And my two and a half meters cost me $103. And then the pattern uh, I bought new from Deer and Doe. But I, I, so far I've made two garments out of it. So the pattern cost me $17.75 once, because they're a French company, so once it was converted to Euro, from euros to Canadian dollars, that's what my uh, bank, that's what my credit card statement said, <laughs> it was seventeen seventy five. So that was according to the exchange rate on the day I bought it. So yeah, it's like, so this dress was $120. Throw in a couple dollars for thread. So I think, I, yeah, I bought one spool of the matching thread. Although it turns out I had a ton of purples in my little thread stash. And then however many hours of work, although it went together quite fast. So yeah, could I have bought a cheaper dress in a store? Sure. Would it have fit me as nicely? Probably not. The thing I've always found with knitting, especially when people would say, oh, that's the most expensive pair of socks I've ever heard of, uh, it's also my entertainment. Like, this is my fun... So this is partly... This sort of cost is, like, partly entertainment budget, too, for me. Um, which I guess is another reason I'm not certain if when I... I'm not, I'm not certain if I'll include my labor at this point. Again, I also need to take better notes about how long it takes me to do stuff. And then for this, this was a different Blackbird purchase. Although there was probably a coupon because when I buy from Blackbird, I'll buy like four or five lengths of fabric at the same time. So it ends up being an expensive bill because I'm buying five things. But I almost always only do that when there's a coupon. There must have been a coupon at this point because I, <laughs> I looked up the orders before uh, before filming, and this was in an order with like four other things that have still not been sewn, but at least one of them has been sewn now. But yeah, so this was dead stock. This fabric, I had two meters. It was $43 for the two meters. And then the pattern, for purposes of like costing out this single project, I would say $9. But the, you have to buy the bundle, like you can't buy this skirt pattern separate. So the bundle, once it was converted from pounds to Canadian dollars, was $44 for five patterns, which is basically nine. It's like eight point something. So it's basically nine for this. So this skirt was 52, remember it's Canadian dollars, I'm in Canada. So yeah, this skirt was 52 Canadian dollars. But the other thing is, I can't buy this particular thing in a shop. I can't go out and say, I'm looking for a red wrap skirt. Uh, with a high-low hem and like bandana print on it. I wouldn't be able, if that's exactly what I wanted, I can't find that in a store. So to help me with doing uh, the videos, I've been keeping a spreadsheet of uh, my sewing projects and what I've completed. So far this year, it's actually only these three items. <laughs> uh, but I have added a fabric cost column to it and a pattern cost. So it will be either interesting or terrifying to uh, <laughs> make Excel add that up at the end of the year. It's a little hard to know for me how to count the pattern costs because like I said the the Orage pattern was $17 but I've now made two things so does that mean it was $8.50 and if I make two more things was it $4.25? But like if I just wanted to make this purple thing I had to pay for the whole pattern. So that won't be as easy to add up at the end of the year, but I have a whole year. I have three quarters of a year to think about that 
and if I even keep adding these things up. I think it's interesting though. I like graphs. <laughs> I like keeping information. I like uh, putting information together in Excel and having that information if I want it. Other crafting. I've been knitting. As I said, I went to visit my parents for my birthday, which is the beginning of April. So I finished those. I finished the dress at the very, very end of March, just in time. And then I have about a four to five hour flight to uh, go visit them. And I realized late the night before when I had a very early wake up, when I had a very early alarm set so I could get to the airport on time, I realized I'd need a knitting project for the plane. So I, 11 o'clock at night, when I had an alarm going off at three in the morning, I pulled a ball of yarn from my stash and wound it up. I actually got out the ball winder. I didn't bother with the swift. I just laid the yarn loop out on the table and wound it up into a ball. And on my trip, I got about this far. Four and a half-ish hours of flying, plus the waiting time in the airport. Um, I did have a layover both ways, although those were both kind of scarily short. So I didn't do a lot of knitting in the airport because it was more <laughs> finding the gate, finding a snack before the plane left. But yeah, that's most of a sock. It's a whole cuff, about half or slightly more than half of the foot. It's just a plain old sock. But yeah, I decided to do a waffle pattern, which is really easy. It's just two rows plain, two rows knit everything, and then the next two rows you do a knit two purl two rib, and then you do two, row, two rows plain again, and then you do the rib for two rows, and you just keep doing that, and it makes a nice little waffle. Uh, I, I already have a pair of socks in my drawer that I've made like this. I think I made, I made my dad a waffle texture hat one Christmas, I think, and then after making that I really enjoyed doing that pattern, so I made myself a pair of socks, just using the same little four row pattern. And for interest, I decided to do that with this. The yarn is from Skein Yarn. Uh, it's the top draw sock. And the colorway is Bruise. I remember when I bought this, again, this is years and years and years ago, I was working with my friend Joanne. In fact, we may have, we may have ordered together, because sometimes we would do that when we were at work. <laughs> when we had some downtime, we would browse yarn together and especially as this yarn comes from Australia, um, I, I think I remember us doing joint yarn orders a couple times, um, just to save on shipping. And I remember I ordered this because I had fallen at work and I had a huge bruise all over my leg. And that was just like, it was just at the top. <laughs> Bruises were at the top of my mind at that moment because I had like this huge splotch on my leg. And when I saw this, was called Bruise, and it's colors I like, like blue and a nice little sort of pond scum, mossy green sort of color. I thought that's perfect. That's what I need right now. And then, so I did that maybe eight to 10 years ago. And then I moved that yarn across the country along with all my other yarn. And now I'm finally knitting it <laughs> for me. But yeah, I'm hoping to keep knitting. I've been, I've done a little bit of knitting since I got back from my trip. Um, in the evenings watching TV and I hope to have a brand new handmade pair of socks um, probably just as the weather's getting warm. Okay so the last thing I wanted to mention before I go is my next sewing project plan. I'm finally going to sew up some of my giant fabric bundle. Now you'll notice that I made a couple videos at the beginning of the year about the giant fabric bundle I bought of like 36 meters of fabric or something and how my plan for the year was to sew it all up or at least sew a garment out of each fabric because some of them I have so much fabric it's gonna be multiple garments and then I immediately started sewing other stuff <laughs> so making those videos and talking about all that fabric really got me out of like a sewing rut made me really happy and interested to sew again but I just, it was so hard to decide which of those eight fabrics to start with and to know which pattern I wanted to put with which fabric that I sewed this little red skirt instead. <laughs> and then I had a mission to do this for my birthday. But now we are getting back to the big bundle and I think I want to sew this. Uh, it's a polyester fabric. I had 
I had a lot of it. I had 4.6 meters. I have 4.6 meters of this, although it is in three separate pieces um, because it was remnants from uh, Birds of North America, which is a fa local fashion brand. So this, I want to do the Vicky Sews Virium dress, and I printed out that pattern and stuck it together yesterday. I might have bitten off more than I can chew. <laughs> I might have bitten off more than I can actually cut out on my table, which is just like a, a gate leg folding dining table, because that dress is all on the bias and it's paneled. So there's center front panel, two side front panels, and then the back is the same where there's a center back and then the side back. So there's it's like six panels to go around your body. And so they all look like this. This, I believe, is the front side. Yeah, so that's where your arm goes. And then the front middle panel will be here, and then this will be mirrored over there. But so it's these long, thin pieces, and they're cut on the bias, which I knew. I knew all this. It didn't really connect in my brain until I started looking at the actual instructions for the fabric or for the pattern and the pattern layout. So I have to get this hugely long piece at 45 degrees. So you're cutting everything out in a single layer. And like the fabric is wider than my tabletop. And I don't think if I put this at 45 degrees, it's going to be longer than my table. So I might have to cut this out on the floor, which I really try and avoid. Uh, I, I live in a one bedroom apartment. I do not live in a big place. So I think, do I have enough floor? Like I don't have enough table, but do I have enough floor? Probably. As I said, my sewing table is in my living room. It's right behind you. It's right there. Turn around. You see it? <laughs> uh, it's one of those gate like folding tables. I think I'm going to have to clear it off fold the table down and put it flat against the wall to give myself the floor space to try and cut out all these bits. But I do have like a goal for this dress. I was hoping to wear it um, to an event on the 20th of April and now it's, what is it now? It's the 8th? I think it's the 9th. I'm not certain that's going to happen anymore unless I get cutting speedy speedy after, after talking to you guys. Because I think that means I've only got one more weekend in between now and that date. Um, so I'll try. The reason I try to avoid cutting out on the floor is it has four legs and a little waggy tail. Because as soon as I put stuff out on the floor, he is all over it. He's like, oh, thank you. Bed for me? Is that your yoga mat? No, it's my yoga mat now. Are you trying to pin a quilt and you've got a dish of pins sitting there? Let me step in it. Not great. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't think... I didn't think about the cutting out space when I was looking at the pattern and thinking about all those bias pieces. I think this is going to be a challenge. But the purple dress was so much easier than I thought it was going to be that maybe a challenge is good. Maybe I need a challenge. Maybe I will try, give up, and wear the purple dress because that's a gorgeous dress too. Yeah, so that's all my crafting for the past little while. I hope you enjoyed this little catch up. Uh, hearing about what I've made, what I'm planning, what I'm knitting. Let me know in the comments if you liked either of these patterns or you think you'd make them think you'd make them yourself. As I said, I saw Cathcraft's Orage dress and immediately it was like making that. So I think that's what's so fun about these types of videos, just showing what you're making, is just sharing that with other people because I I don't know if I would have seen that pattern had I not watched that video. And if you could give a like, subscribe, leave a comment. It's great to hear from everyone. I'm having lots of fun doing these and I find put these out every two weeks. So give a follow and then you'll know when I put out the next one and we'll see you then. Bye.